You're never too old or too young to write fiction, but you do have to have something to say. We'll talk about that on the other side of the intro. Hi, I'm John Gilstrap, author of the Jonathan Grave Thriller series. Question comes up quite a lot as to whether, from authors wondering whether they're too old or too young to start writing. There seems to be this, this sense that there's age discrimination um, with, within the, the industry, and I'm to, here to tell you that no, there's not. Nobody cares what the author looks like or how old the author is, wh what his sexual orientation is. None of that matters in the publishing industry. What matters is the ability to tell a good story well. Now, the critical element of telling a good story well is having something to say. I think one of the worst bits of advice that's ever been given to students in creative writing classes is to write what you know. Well, you know, taken to the extreme, you know, that means that Thomas Harris had to be a serial killer in order to create Hannibal Lecter. That means that uh, Jeffrey Deaver has to be a D New York detective in order to write his Lincoln Rhyme series, or that I need to be a Delta operator in order to write my Jonathan Graves series. That's just not true. The better way, assuming you're writing mainstream fiction, okay, this is, that's always the assumption here in, in these videos, um, you can make up characters. You can make up um, motivations. You can make up storylines. What you can't do is make up chemistry and physics. You can't make up weapons behavior. You can't make up fire behavior and the way things, things work. So if, or, or how a boat operates or, you know, or what life was like in the 17th century, you can't make that up. It was what it was. So if those are the areas that you want to write about, then just be willing to do the research. So it's not so much write what you know as write what you're willing to learn and to know your limitations. For example, if you're going to write a story that's set in a real place, you better by God know the real place. You know, I would never dream, for example, of writing a story that's based in New York from the point of view of a New Yorker because I've never been a New Yorker and I know enough of them to know that it's a really nuanced place. One neighborhood is different than another neighborhood. You take the this train to get to a place instead of, and you would never take the that train to get to a place. There's no way I can have that granular level of detail. So I would never, uh, I would never attempt to write it. So when we talk about writing what you know, really think of it in terms of writing what it is that you're willing to learn. Now the second part of write what you know um, is, uh, would, would be, write, have something to say that would resonate with your intended audience. Not all audiences, with your intended audience. My intended audience is uh, it's adult market fiction, you know? Um, if I were to write YA, I would write different kinds of stories. In fact, one of the, just personally, one of the problems I had with the uh, Hunger Games trilogy was as much as I liked the first book in the series, Oh, once we got to the second and, and certainly the third book, we've got the entire world hanging in the balance and Katniss Everdeen is wondering whether or not the boy likes her. Well, that really didn't resonate with me, but I wasn't the intended audience. And I don't know if you've noticed, those books did really, really well. So the idea is knowing what your audience is and then writing to it. And here's where age can come in. Um, the average 12-year-old uh, in America is, can't possibly imagine what it's like to be a new father or a new mother. They can't possibly understand what it's like to be a firefighter. There are certain, you know, there's certain things that just don't come with, with the age group. And if they try to write outside of that, it shows and it, and it doesn't, it just doesn't work very well. Similarly, as a boomer, I would have a hard time writing a, a YA book about the high school experience these days because it is so entirely different than what it was when I was growing up. We didn't have the pressures of social media. We didn't have the pressures of all these exams and stuff that they have to take. So the, the stories that I would write about a high school experience from the point of view of a high schooler would by definition be kind of wrong. So if you're compelled to write a story that is set in a place that you don't necessarily understand all that well, here's my advice for you. Write around 
what you don't know. Right? So I don't, I, I lived, I've lived in Northern Virginia my whole life, Fairfax County, but I never write about Fairfax County. My stories are set here, but I've created a place called Braddock County. And Braddock County for locals, you know, people who live here, recognize the intersections and, and some of the, the, the landmarks for what they are. But by creating a fictional county, I don't have to worry about what the real police department does. You know, the Fairfax County police, what their duty schedules are, what kind of weapons they carry and all of that. I don't have to worry about it because I've created a fictional place. It makes it a lot easier on myself. Jonathan Gray works out of Fisherman's Cove, Virginia. It's a lovely place that's along the Rappahannock River, essentially where Colonial Beach is, but it looks nothing like Colonial Beach and it serves my purposes. The place doesn't exist. I've made it up to fit the story. Now that's perfectly fine to do. And frankly, you know, I, I, I think that's, it, it, it makes my life as a writer that much easier. Now I do want to talk one more age related thing. What I find in, I, and I do a lot of work with young people, I uh, talk to a lot of high schools and, and, and junior highs even. What I find is the younger the writer is, the more hesitant he or she is to really be honest with their feelings. You know, it's a very vulnerable age. Uh, people are, are, you know, kids are terrified of having their weaknesses exposed for whatever reason, and I get that. Uh, adults are afraid of that too. But the key element to, um, to effect, uh, effective fiction is the ability to connect with the audience, and the way you connect with the audience or the reader is to let the emotions show. So what happens in a lot of fiction from young people, they don't want to go there. They don't want to open that vein and let it show. And that's why a lot of younger uh, fiction from younger people, or even from newer writers, tends to be kind of bland because they just aren't willing to go to that place. And you know what? Going to that place is the X factor in effective writing. Uh, spelling and grammar can be taught. Sentence structure can be taught. Uh, characterization can sort of be taught, I think. But unless the, the writer is willing to share honest emotion on the page, the story can never resonate. So that's it for today, folks. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the little circle that appears up here. Uh, like me on Facebook, author John Gilstrap. Follow me on Twitter, at John Gilstrap. Or visit my website, we've got a lot of cool stuff at johngillstrap.com. But as always, if you don't care to do any of that stuff, please, Kate, please take care and please keep reading. I'm John Gillstrap.